everybody, welcome back to uh, Project Swamp Cat. Today, or tonight, we're going to be doing, or installing, uh, we're going to take these old, not really old, but uh, factory rock sliders off, and we're going to put on a set of rock slide engineering step sliders for the JL. Should be a good time. Hope you enjoy it. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do on these factory skids is pull nine bolts. You got two, uh, well, six along the pinch seam here. So there's one on each side of the primary bracket mount. So one and two, and then repeat that three times. And then, so you'll pull both of those, and then you'll pull this one. These are 10 millimeter. And I believe these are 12 millimeter, maybe 13. I'll verify that in a second. Um, be careful when you pull these out because uh, if you're not supporting this, it will fall and smack you in the face and it's steel, so it'll kind of hurt. All right. All right, so uh, with <clears throat> pulling these factory um, rails, the uh, first thing you're going to want to do is pull the uh, the mounting nuts, obviously the mounting hardware. So you got three mounting points. Each mounting point contains two pinch seam uh, bolts and then one uh, body bolt. So these two pinch seam bolts are 10 mils and this one's a 13 mil. So pull all those here in the middle there and then on the end down there. Uh, when you get them pulled out, be careful with this thing because it is steel and so if your face is underneath it and you're not supporting it, you will bruise your face. So, stay pretty. Okay, so the next step is we're going to loosen these body bolts. There's three on each side that you have to loosen. You only need to pull them out about a quarter of an inch or so. Uh, just enough to get the washer loose and to get some space between the, uh, the rubber uh, mount itself and the washer. I'm going to use an impact on these. Um, you can do this with a breaker bar too. All right, there we go. All done. Repeat that on the uh, other two on this side. So the goal on these body mounts is to get them loose enough that you can get the brackets in between the uh, nut and the washer. So just kind of keep loosening those guys until you get enough space in there to uh, move the washer up and down and get those brackets in there. When you're putting the brackets in, you've got three brackets for each side. The short one goes in the middle. So the short one will go in the middle over here. This long one will go in the rear and then there's a completely separate design for the front bracket so it's easy to distinguish. And how much upward movement you got on that? Don't, don't pull that all the way out. Yeah, I was just trying to get to... yeah you've got... So that, uh, that washer is captured on there so it's only going to move so far anyways. Mm -hmm. You may have to kind of spin it, see if you can squeeze the bracket in there. Yeah, there you go. All right, so there's a good point there. Um, that washer is going to be retained onto the bolt. So even if you uh, pull this thing all the way out, that washer is still only going to move so far on that bolt. So, um, you know, only only pull it out just enough to get it uh, to get it in or to be able to get the bracket in. Right. So like on this one. We don't have it quite far enough, so we're going to put a couple more turns on that and see, um, see where we're at. Alright, so if you get one that's a little stuck, then uh, use your friend the rubber mallet to give it some... Uh, some persuasion, be careful doing this because as you can see, 
This thing isn't exactly on here very well at right now and it's not lined up. So if you start whacking on it real hard um, at first, then you're likely to hit it the wrong way and get it wedged in there or damage your bracket or your bolt or whatever. So tap it easy at first. Okay, so what we ended up having to do on this one was hold, we'll back that up a little bit more, but then we had to hold the washer kind of flat and push it up as far as it will go. And then we were able to get the, uh, the bracket started in there and then using the hammer, um, tap it in the rest of the way through. So uh, you may have to use that little trick with yours. Um, with this tolerance being as tight as it is, uh, we may run into an issue where when we tighten these down, this bracket's going to want to rotate. Um, I've already read through the rest of the of the install procedure, and we're not going to tighten these down until like the very end, so you'll have the rest of the slider here to um, brace it. But um, you know something's going to spin there, and it's probably going to be the the bolt head, which will cut into the middle of the bracket. Uh, and I may end up causing some rust, so we'll see if we have to come back here uh, later on and uh, tap this in or uh, hit this with a little bit of, of spray paint to uh, give it some corrosion resistance. All right, so with the front bracket here, obviously, like I said, it's pretty easy to distinguish from the others. Um, we didn't have any issues with this one, so you just slide it in however it fits and then turn it so that it's uh, straight with the outside. Uh, the Jeep. Okay, so yeah, we were just talking about this. So pay careful attention to the instructions here because there are six bolts, but two of them are different than the other four. The instructions are clear about which ones they are. Just make sure that you get the uh, right nylock nuts onto the right bolts. Each one's gonna take a nylock nut and a washer. Um, so just get them on there and get them, get them started, obviously, uh, and then we'll move to the next step. So the sliders, the hardware, there's three separate size um, uh, washers, and then there's a set of bolts and then uh, two separate sizes of nylock nuts. Um, so again, the, the instructions are you know, fairly clear about what goes where. Just make sure you pay attention to <clears throat> the getting the right size nylock nut with the right size washer, right? <clears throat> it has, there's two different size washers, one with a big hole and one with a small hole. Um, so make sure you get the washers paired up with the right size nut and you get everything put on the right bolts, or correction, right studs on the sliders. Um, so. You know, like like we did, we started out first and, and made sure we matched everything up and got it figured out before we started putting things on. Um, so now we're gonna start throwing these on. We're just gonna finger tight them, get them all on there, and then uh, we'll tighten them down. Okay, so lesson learned. I'm glad I didn't keep going until it clicked because I would have snapped that sucker off. So um, the smaller bolts obviously have a smaller torque setting, so make sure that you change torque settings in between. Um, I'm gonna switch my sockets out real quick and do the other <clears throat> half inch, and then I'll change the torque settings and go back. Almost. All right, so next step is to uh, just tighten down these uh, uh, 12, um, 12 bolts. Uh, I'm going to run them in with an impact, and then we're going to come back with a torque wrench and torque them down. Um, if you're gonna use an impact on these, make sure you set it to the lowest torque setting available and be very careful. 
it's super easy to put an extreme excessive amount of torque on anything with an impact wrench. You might have noticed this if you've ever been to or taken your uh, vehicle to a tire shop, had any kind of wheel or tire work done and they put your tires on and then you couldn't even get the lug nuts off with a breaker bar it's because they used an impact gun and they put way too much torque on. <clears throat> so, be careful. So, done on the driver's side uh, with the actual slider install. So we're gonna move over to the same exact thing on the passenger side and uh, we'll catch back up to you afterwards when we get to doing the wiring. I'm not gonna show you any of the driver side or the, the passenger side stuff unless we run into an issue that uh, I think that you could learn from. All right, see ya. One eternity later. All right, so we finished the install on the passenger side. Uh, the steps are in, they're solid. Did the uh, old weight test. I'm only a couple hundred pounds, but it held me up really well. So awesome. Uh, now we're doing the wiring. So first step on the wiring says to come in here on the driver's side and uh, pop these trim pieces out. Um, this is a huge improvement over the JK. These trim pieces connect to, they just kind of pop out from actual mounting brackets that bolt into the uh, Jeep body. Um, on the old JK, these had those stupid tree, plastic tree pins that went in and out and they were pretty much only good for one time use. These things are going to pop in and out as many times as you want to and never lose their structural integrity. So that is a huge improvement. Um, but you basically just got to pop this out um, on the rear here and then in the front we'll do the same thing. Um, right along the driver's side we'll pop this out all the way up to here. You don't have to completely remove it uh, because <clears throat> for one it's uh, in order to completely remove it you'd have to pull some bolts and stuff up in here. You just really need to get these loose enough so that you can uh, gain access to the wiring in here because we're going to take the harness for the steps and kind of tuck it in under here as we go. So moving around to the front, the uh, next step is to take your battery wire harness and uh, connect it to the battery. Um, real quick before we do that, you know, you got a lot of harness here, obviously. Uh, this is all the stuff that goes inside the Jeep and runs to the doors and to the controller. Um, so lay that out, you know, make sure that uh, you don't have any uh, damage from the manufacturer there, any frayed wiring or uh, broken uh, braiding protection, anything like that. Um, assuming that all that's good, and you can go ahead, uh, you're going to take your wiring harness, um, red to positive, black to ground, obviously pull your fuse before you do that. Uh, Jeep has been kind enough to already give you mounting points to do this with. So um, on the negative terminal, you have a uh, terminal lug here that you can use. And then on the positive terminal, you've got a couple of options. <clears throat> you've got one up here, one here, and uh, that one's actually a little too big. So I'm probably going to use this one. Once we get it connected, then we're going to route it up this way along the back of the firewall over to the, back over to the driver's side. And if you look real carefully, um, down inside there, there's, you can see a little hole about two inches wide maybe, that uh, uh, when you get to it, it's going to have a plug. <clears throat> the plug actually comes out it takes a quarter turn to undo it and, and, and pull it out <clears throat> but you're probably not gonna be able to do it from the inside if you come back over this way I'll show you what that plug looks like so here's the plug this is how you'll see it from the engine bay it's got these two little tabs on it which are meant to allow you to kind of grip it and turn it to get it out but these tabs are flimsy and kind of garbage so um, at least I wasn't able to get it out with the tabs but it's easily accessible from the interior of the Jeep. So what I ended up doing was grabbing a set of channel locks here and basically wiggled up in there in the passenger in the driver footwell, got my channel locks locked onto the lip that was exposed, <clears throat> and just gave it that quarter turn and then it popped out and fell out into the into the floor of the garage. So once you get that out, 
Then you can uh, drill a little hole in it just big enough for your uh, wiring harness to go through. Probably, uh, I don't know, maybe half an inch. I wouldn't go too big. Uh, I haven't figured out exactly how big I'm going to do that yet, but I, f I think half an inch is, is plenty big. Um, the harness has quick disconnects on it. So you can you know drill your hole and then feed one side through and then feed the other side through until you have the entire harness through and then come back and um, you know once you get it to where you want it you've got the harness pulled far enough through and everything's kind of zip tied in <clears throat> come back through and put some uh, silicone on that to uh, to reestablish your water seal Alternatively, you can, I haven't found any yet, but I'm sure that there are um, waterproof plugs out on the market <clears throat> that you can just run these types of wiring harness through and plug it back up. Again, I haven't found one yet. If I do find one, I'll make sure to let you guys know. Um, but those are fairly common, so it should be relatively easy to find. All right, so we're gonna wire that up and then we'll come back and show you how it looks. So we ran that through the hole in the firewall down there, <clears throat> and then we come back along over here to the uh, front and our wires came out of the firewall up here so wires came out of the firewall up here <clears throat> you probably can't see them but there are little pigtails <clears throat> and then we took our other large wiring harness and laid most of it in the back back here and ran the power wires and the wires uh, for the front door harness up here. We're just gonna take those and tuck them in underneath the trim panel here um, and then do the same thing in the back. 2,000 years later. All right, welcome back to uh, day two of this install. We uh, hit about midnight last night, so decided to call it. Um, the next step of the procedure has us uh, run the uh, wiring harness basically throughout the Jeep. So um, what we're gonna be doing here is uh, figuring out exactly which, um, which uh, tentacles, I guess for lack of a better word, of the wiring harness go where, and then uh, routing them through the tub of the Jeep to um, the motors, um, there's also connections that would go to the light sensors if you're using lights. Um, I don't have my light kit yet, so I uh, won't, be, won't be putting those in just yet. Um, the way you're going to do this is, we talked before about popping the uh, trim out, that's pretty easy. <clears throat> the hole that you're going to use is right here. There's a little body color circle you'll see. This is just a plastic plug that's been uh, kind of sealed in with some uh, adhesive of some kind. So you're gonna take, you know, a knife or, or a uh, uh, razor blade or something, and very carefully kind of peel that out and then pop this up. Um, this is plastic, so it's not gonna seal around the wire loom. Um, so we're probably gonna silicone this as well once we get everything uh, wrapped up. All right, so I want to show you real quick what this plug looks like now that I've got it out. Um, it's got a couple of uh, kind of locking clips on the side there. So once you uh, use your knife and kind of uh, slice the adhesive that's on there, then you'll have to kind of run your hand underneath the Jeep and uh, squeeze those to pop it out. <clears throat> and then this is what the hole looks like so we're just gonna run our wiring harness through down through that hole and then uh, again we'll we'll seal everything back up once we get it all in place <clears throat> same hole exists on the passenger side and in the same place we use the same method to get it out um, I pulled the harness through already as you can see um, the pushing it through is pretty simple use the connector for the uh, for the controller itself and you just gotta stick your hand up underneath the carpet and kind of lift the carpet with one hand and then push the connector through and over the uh, transmission hump in the middle and then it will uh, you just come around the other side and reach under and grab it and pull it through um, so all this will get stuff back under the carpet eventually but for now we're gonna leave it out so you've got several connectors here right 
the waterproof connector um, male end here this is for the step this is power for the step and it matches up with the, the female end on the other side so it's hard to mess up um, this connector is the controller for the or is the control wiring and power for the lights if you have the light kit so that would run through the same hole as the power for the steps if you're doing that um, and then these two are for the doors uh, the instructions tell you which one goes to which door as you can see you got a uh, gray and a green wire there and then you got blue and white over here i haven't gotten far enough into the instructions yet to figure out which is which but uh, they tell you which one goes to which and then you got this connector here that goes to the control box so i'm going to run those through the floor and then i'll um, bring you guys back hey so uh, we're going to kind of skip around the procedure a little bit here um i felt like it was best to go ahead and uh, install the little manual override switch underneath the dash so that way i can go ahead and clean up this wiring on this side of the jeep um, this part's pretty simple you got the bracket here and then you have the little switch and the wiring um, harness that you've already put in uh, this is going to mount up here uh, on the little bolt for the obd2 port uh, that's an eight millimeter bolt so we'll pull that in a second um, the procedure has you mount the bracket and then run the wiring but i feel like it's a little bit easier to do it out here where you got better access to everything so um wiring it up this wiring up the switch is pretty easy you got two blue connectors and then a uh like orange or pink connector uh the two blue connectors are going to connect to the two silver spades on the switch and then the two or the one blue connector the one orange connector sorry is going to connect to the uh brass or yellow spade on the switch so you just plug those up. I put a little bit of dielectric grease on mine. Um, you can get this at any hardware store. Pretty common. Um, it's a good uh, waterproofing method. Obviously these are going to be in the cab, so li not likely to be immersed in water, but you know, it is a Jeep, you never know. So, um, so just put a little bit of grease on each, on each terminal. The best way to do it is to kind of fill the, uh, the uh, connector section and then that way you don't have to get your hands as greasy. And then it just clips in just like that. If you ever need to take it out, it has you know spring clips on the back side. You can just squeeze those and the switch will pop right back out. Um, and that's pretty easy. Now the only one of the wire you got here is this ground wire. When you disconnect the OBD2 sensor, this ground wire is gonna go either between the sensor bracket and the wiring harness bracket or between the sensor bracket or the obd2 port bracket and the frame rail here so uh, between here and here bracket and frame rail or between bracket and bracket the important thing is it needs to make a metal to metal connection um you obviously got kind of tight quarters in here uh, i'm a little bit concerned about how well we're going to be able to access the OBD2 port with this switch in here so we may have to make some adjustments to that OBD2, OB, OBD2 port to uh, fix that all right get that started so hopefully these two brackets will kind of self-align on that indexing notch as we uh put this in here so you don't have to have three hands holding everything there's one definitely one. all right sweet so ground strap there tucked back switch mounted obd2 mounted I feel like the best solution for this OBD2 sensor is probably going to be to just bend this bracket backwards and kind of push it up a little bit more flush. You got a little bit of room back there behind this mounting rail um, where you won't impact the wiring for the OBD2 port itself. So, uh, so yeah, that's probably what I'll end up doing. 
I've already connected the wires for the battery. These already had pre -electric or dielectric grease um, in them from rock slide, so you just gotta hook them up and then tuck the, uh, tuck the wiring in. And you wanna try and get as much of this underneath. Well, that's, I said try, but get all of this underneath the trim because you don't want your feet kicking this stuff down here and accidentally pulling things out. <sighs> All right, sweet. Switch. Um, I'm hoping this loop will come out. If not, I'll just tuck it in back here like this. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is actually attach the door sensors to the uh, door frames. So the sensors themselves are uh, not specific to a door. So you can just pull one sensor, uh, doesn't matter which one. And you're gonna take an alcohol wipe and uh, you're going to clean the back of the sensor and the area of the door underneath the hinge, uh, or sorry, the latch here, where you're gonna attach it. Um, and then give it about a five second, 10 second count to dry. And then they've given you some little double-sided sticky tape to um, attach those on. Uh, wipe, clean, clean, set aside. Make sure we, when you set it down, obviously you don't want to set it down where it can get dirty again. I'm just setting these up here on the seat with the clean side facing up. And then we're gonna wipe here underneath. It's not a big area you have to clean, you know, just make sure you get it. And then I'm moving back here to do the rear door. <laughs> These sensors go in the same spot on each door, just underneath and centered on the latch. The important part is that when you go to put the magnets on, you get the magnets aligned properly to the sensor. That will determine whether or not your door uh, or your step uh, slider works. Having some fingernails might help with this. Um, they've got them pictured going on here with the uh, tab facing up. I'm not sure that it matters, but I'm going to go ahead and do it that way anyways, just uh, to be accurate with the procedure. Okay, that little guy stuck on there. Press it down firmly, give it 5 or 10 count. And then you should be good. Okay, so you can see here we got uh, our connector wiring and then the wiring from the harness. The uh, procedure states that the front driver's pass or the front driver's door uses the uh, connector with the yellow and orange wiring so that's what I've got here going to uh, throw just a smidge of dielectric in there um, I'm basically you know like I said before just putting it inside the female end so that way uh, it's a little bit less messy it does there's a uh, alignment notch so there's um, on the female end, there's an alignment notch or a, a click, a retainment click. So line up your retainment uh, spring on this side with the notch on the other side and snap it together. Easy peasy. Okay, so one thing I wanted to make a note of on the passenger side with these, that's a little different than the driver side, is the orientation of the sensor itself. So on the driver side, you know, I made a point to say that this uh, little tab should go up. But on the passenger side, you want to make sure that tab goes down so that your wiring points into the vehicle, right? You know, if you flip it around the other way, your wiring would come out this way and you have to loop it around to go back. Um, and obviously we don't want to do that because we want as little wiring exposed and to damage as possible. So tab down, wiring in, good to go. Okay, hopefully you guys can see this okay. <clears throat> so. I mentioned earlier that uh, my um, hole on the in the tub on the driver's side over here was circular uh, instead of ovular, and so my uh, connector here wouldn't go through because it is ovular. <coughs> so. Uh, First, what I've done is I bought a little 
rubber grommet to put in here to protect the wiring from abrasions on that uh, uh, sheet metal surface that are going around that edge. I know that they've given the wiring some protection, like a protective loom here, but I like to be uh, a little bit more cautious because, you know, the protective loom will only stand up to so much um, abrasion itself. So, um, I got this at the auto parts store, super easy to find, um, and it just pushes in there, <clears throat> and it goes on both sides of the uh, sheet metal, so it'll protect it from either side. So, on this, what I was going to do was cut the sheet metal out to make room, but instead, I changed my mind, and I went and bought a little pinout tool, and I'm just going to depin this connector, and then feed the wires through separately, and then put the connector back together on the other side. This is pretty simple to do. <clears throat> you just got to be careful that you get the uh, the wires back in the right spots because if you don't, then when you go to connect it, it'll be backwards and it won't work right. So you just take your D-pin tool and you slide it in over uh, into the end of the connector there over the pin that's in there and kind of give it a little push. You'll feel it click. And then at that point, you can just pull from the back of the wire and the pin will come out. Okay, you guys see that? Pretty simple. So then we do the same thing on the other side. And the pin comes right out. Now what I'm gonna do is leave the pin out tool in the side, in the hole of the connector that I took the black wire out of. So that way when I go to reconnect it on the other side, I know which wire goes where. So now I've got my two wires run through the Jeep, got my pin out, <clears throat> or my connector, sorry, with my uh, uh, pin out tool still on the side from the black. So what I'm gonna do is um, go ahead and reinsert that one in. I'm not gonna push that one in there too hard because I don't wanna fight against the pin out tool, but I'm also gonna go ahead and land. These don't have to go in in any particular orientation. You just slide them in and they'll click in, just like that. And then I'll take my pinout tool out and push this one in to make sure it's seated. <clears throat> and then I'm going to give them both a little tug to make sure they're seated properly and won't come out. And then we're done. Easy peasy. Click. There we go. Much better. <clears throat> okay, we're good to go. So now I can pull the excess slack back up into the Jeep. And route this around so if you're running the lighting inside the step the little light strips <clears throat> you can do that same exact thing with this connector use your pinout tool to uh, take that connector apart and slide it through the grommet there all right so the next step is going to be putting our magnets on to the door so uh, these are going to stick on with your uh, double-sided stickies left over from earlier um, same process, you're going to use um, isopropyl alcohol, clean the surface of the magnet, and then clean the surface of the door where you're going to stick it, and then uh, apply the double sided tape. Um, so the tricky part here is making sure that you get your magnet lined up with where the sensor is going to be. So this is pretty much an eyeball it kind of thing, but you basically um, can assume that your hinge, or sorry, the latch that you mounted the sensor under over on the door frame is gonna take up the same amount of surface area as the latch here, including the screws. So basically, the uh, right underneath this screw is where that latch is gonna stop, which is basically right where your magnet's gonna need to go and about centered in the uh, space at the door frame there. On this side, it looks like there's a little um, uh, spot weld right there, so we can use that as our mark point. So we're just going to take our one magnet on top, wipe it down, wipe down the door here, give those like a five or ten count to uh, dry while we go ahead and get our sticky tape ready. So we'll just stick that little guy on there like that, pat it down, and then slide it off from 
the rest of the group. And we can throw away our little white ring. And then carefully pull the other side of the backing tape. This would probably help if you had fingernails, which I don't. Okay, and then again, we're gonna eyeball it about center. Now, obviously this thing is a magnet, so it will stick to the door all on its own. So make sure you got a good grip on it, because if you aren't where you want to put it, and you don't have a good grip on it, then it will, the magnet will just magnetize itself to the door right out of your hand. So, that's the driver door done. Should line up pretty close with the, it's hard to see around the gaskets and stuff, but it should line up pretty close. So I recommend that you test these one at a time rather than doing them all and then waiting until uh, they're all installed to uh, do any kind of testing because if you get them all installed and then the system doesn't work, you have to go back and test each one individually anyways to figure out which one's out of place. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the fuse back in. So everything works as designed so far. Uh, now the reason why the stuff's deployed is because I do not have the doors off override switch installed yet. I forgot to order that, so it's coming. And I have the doors on the other side um, off, as well as no magnets installed. So contrary to my uh, previous statement, we're actually going to need to put them all in before we can test any of them. Because otherwise, that's stay deployed, thinking that the door's open since there's no magnet. So I'm going to go around and install the other ones, and then we'll do a test. All right, so I've got the uh, front and rear driver's side magnets installed. Um, Obviously the sides operate independently of each other. So, there we are. Open, deployed, shut, retracts. Same thing for rear door. And you're done. So only thing left to do now is to um, go around and zip tie everything, put the trim pieces back in place, make everything all nice and neat looking. Um, and then anywhere that you had a body penetration, so at the firewall and the two holes in the tub uh, in front of the rear seats, you want to go through and uh, make sure that those are still watertight. So uh, rubber grommets or uh, with some silicone or uh, rubber plugs or whatever. Um, Unless, of course, you're running without carpets, and then, you know, do what you want. All right. Thanks, guys. Hope you enjoyed it.